but the most important and the most important the, the biopharmaceutical property like solubility and the dissolution rate uh, can be different. Uh, so those are contribute um, the final product development, uh, which is a, a, a drug uh, that related to its uh, particular uh, the PK profile. But so it's very important. And, and the other aspect is that you would like to find the most stable, uh, means the thermodynamic and most stable form. Uh, otherwise, um, you may have a chance at the trans transition from one uh, uh, a, a, a state uh, to another, uh, which also uh, ha have the other property associated with that that can be changed. And so that's a, why it's very important. Is it for the product that we consider as a product that development important. And from that uh, standpoint of view, uh, this has become very essential uh, for this company uh, in history. And so by the end of 2016, we're working with Pfizer and to demonstrate uh, this is the best uh, technology available uh, in the world. And then uh, based on that, uh, in 2017, uh, has a serious uh, uh, related uh, investment, uh, which tremendously helped the company uh, move uh, further. In the, in the middle of 2000, the, uh, um, uh, started as a 2018, uh, we built the strategic partnership uh, um, uh, from the uh, uh, research and development perspective uh, with the uh, Pfizer R&D uh, Center. And in the middle of 2019, uh, we uh, launched uh, another uh, important uh, platform, uh, which is uh, related to the expansion of the technology, and not only in the product development, but also in drug design and the drug discovery. So that's a, a very significant uh, uh, element of that uh, uh, effort is uh, developed uh, called uh, exopi, as an exophosphate. Uh, and it's, this uh, is considered as a high uh, precision uh, phosphate, uh, which is so uh, critical uh, for a drug design. Uh, in many cases, uh, it is a, uh, um, uh, uh, essential uh, uh, tool for energy calculation. And, uh, and the derivative of that is uh, um, uh, FEP, uh, another uh, free energy calculation tool. Um, and, but at the same time, uh, we also have uh, as a crystal related uh, uh, business expansion and, and, and it's the very first crystal form that, that is, um, not only the computational, but experimental uh, uh, identify uh, this uh, very novel form uh, will make a, a patent and also make a, a transaction. And the, beyond that, uh, the 2020 and 21 and the 22, uh, we have a tremendous expansion uh, in our uh, experimental parts, but, but also uh, a particular expansion in drug design and the drug discovery side. Um, and so this is a, a very brief history of the company, uh, which is uh, um, some logic uh, behind that. Uh, it is it's just, people may ask why um, you started with a crystal structure prediction, but now you have a, a pretty significant uh, effort in drug design and the drug discovery. And so one particular reason for that actually is so crystal structure prediction, whatever the advanced the technology, actually you have a way uh, to uh, validate that. And so it's not only theoretical, uh, there's a form or there's a form which considers the thermodynamically most stable. Um, it's only based on theoretical uh, prediction, but actually experimentally you can validate or you can identify that. Uh, so th this is a very, a very unique needs and a, a good uh, niche um, uh, considers uh, relevant to a, a drug industry. And, but there's no a perfect or good a computational solution for that. And, and, and when you're talking about drug design, the drug discovery and the particular computational based and, and uh, different algorithm, uh, either traditional CADD or uh, the current mixture, uh, uh, injection of AIDD uh, in that space. Many cases, it's very hard to convince people um, the current technology is better uh, or more efficient 
uh, than the traditional, or how you can demonstrate um, something uh, traditionally uh, considered is hard, and, and then uh, the new technology really can help, or, or completely generate a, a novel uh, a compound which in the past cannot even imagine. Uh, it's very hard to uh, sort of have, have an experimental uh, validation for the new technology. Uh, so this is a, a very a general challenge. It's not only for uh, one particular company. It's a, basically uh, for uh, any uh, innovative technology. Uh, when you apply for highly regulated experimental based industry like biopharma industry, uh, that's a very common challenge. Uh, uh, but the current is a company. Um, we have a global team uh, sort of approaching to a thousand people uh, from the uh, employee perspective. And quite a significant, uh, almost a half actually, is considered R&D staff. Uh, they are um, a brilliant, uh, very um, a diligent uh, a scientist from very diverse uh, disciplines uh, the, from uh, the physicists um, uh, and, and also mathematicians uh, and uh, of course uh, chemists uh, uh, and, but also a uh, software uh, software engineering has a lot of uh, 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 cloud-based supercomputing uh, involved in the process but also uh, we realize uh, this uh, the industry is a, actually is an experimental based industry and so the wet lab uh, is a way of a feedback loop uh, as a, for the a drug discovery a a computational platform is essential. Uh, and, and so we uh, expanded uh, the staff uh, from the uh, wet lab uh, uh, needs perspective, uh, a, a great expansion. And then in the past the six, five, seven years, um, there's a very significant, uh, highly impacted paper uh, published and if we combine the paper and the, uh, the patent of fighting, it is more than a hundred. Uh, the most recent one, uh, the nature communication is related to the AI uh, application for uh, helping to, uh, in combination with a crying uh, which is experimental based innovative uh, technology to solve a very difficult challenge, uh, protein structure. Uh, so th those are uh, uh, very tangible, uh, impactful, a result uh, from the technology. And as for the uh, expansion of the uh, company, uh, we now have uh, more than uh, 30,000 uh, square meter uh, lab space uh, distributed in uh, uh, primary in Shanghai and, and Shenzhen. Uh, and also at the very beginning, uh, we focused on the AI research, uh, uh, that facility uh, based on in, in in Beijing, uh, Zhongguanchun Park. Uh, so this is a sort of an overview in the history uh, of the company. I hope um, uh, may uh, pave the way uh, the, to understand the, the, the path of the company uh, better. Um, so this is very simple. It's a, it's the, the technology, like any technology, in particular, uh, we're talking about computational and sort of innovative that the AI machine learning, uh, technology, um, how it can uh, sort of uh, impact the industry. And for the company, uh, XOPI is, uh, uh, is, is a clear and a, a straightforward. Uh, so we try to revolutionize the drug discovery development the process through um, the technology or enabler uh, in the aspect of the, the speed, the scale, and the novelty. Of course, in general, the successful rate uh, which is uh, help uh, the novel uh, molecular modality modality uh, quickly uh, uh, get to uh, access to the patient and the benefit uh, the uh, the community. And the, the thing is related to the business. And, and uh, as I mentioned, the initial one is uh, uh, crystal structure prediction. That's from computational side. Uh, but actually in combination of experimental side, it, it's uh, generally we consider as a solid state research, uh, which is involved in a uh, drug development uh, process, a product development process. Um, and so this has become our very uh, steady and essential uh, uh, part of the business. Um, and uh, what I can tell is a very uh, um, proudly that uh, we can say uh, we still keep 
um, the uh, uh, from the technology perspective, the, the wave of the technology were very much uh, the top uh, of the whole uh, industry. And, and um, uh, although it's not uh, officially published, and so um, every several years there's a, a international um, sort of a blind test uh, regarding the crystal structure of prediction. The most recent one actually is this year, and we are still uh, the number number one in the world. So this is uh, again, it's a, considered as a foundation from the technology perspective um, uh, in the company. Uh, but also from the business perspective, uh, you really see the, the impact in the industry. Um, so this is the solid state research. But the other part, uh, again, it's uh, originally from the solid state of the technology and then expanded uh, to drug design and the drug discovery. And from the business perspective, it's become, uh, we can start from the target up to uh, IND, uh, 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 fighting uh, at that stage. Uh, so, so this is considered as a preclinical uh, one-stop drug discovery uh, type of a business. Uh, that depends on the needs. Um, it can be a certain stage um, uh, of the whole process, uh, but it's not only the computational side, uh, which is involved the design, but also experimental side. And we, we realize and uh, there's no uh, perfect initial kind of a technology applied for every single project. And so you really need is uh, constant uh, feedback uh, from the experiment, and which is a, a really part of the uh, discovery cycle, uh, which I, I'll mention uh, a little bit uh, later on. Um, as related to that, uh, is a, the, the cycle involved the design and the synthesis and test and analyze and go back. And it will find uh, the compound need to be synthesized in order to be tested and then get the data analyzed and feedback to the computational platform. And so the synthesis uh, actually uh, is one of the bottleneck uh, if you look at the entire cycle in particular, uh, the design part, uh, we, we get tremendous help from um, the new technology, including um, um, in our case, the computationally, uh, we incorporate machine learning artificial intelligence into uh, the, the physics-based uh, uh, algorithms. And, and so make that very much um, uh, expanded our scope uh, from the uh, design perspective. Uh, but then uh, the compound need, need to be synthesized. Um, it, it's become, um, in general, uh, the industry consider at the discovery side, uh, it, it's a bottleneck. Uh, you want to have a, a quick, uh, very efficient uh, and the green way uh, get compound uh, synthesized and then in order to uh, apply that for uh, a variety of uh, a tests and, uh, and, and, and go back to the, uh, the cycle. And so we, uh, uh, in, in the past two years, we uh, are really uh, dedicated to uh, develop uh, automated compound synthesis system. Uh, it's a very much is a robotic automation system. Uh, and <clears throat> the most recent development is uh, uh, last month, um, as a company officially uh, launched that uh, type of uh, business, uh, which is a compound a majority. A majority, uh, the process uh, uh, actually is by machine. Uh, uh, it's uh, only a small portion, uh, which is a uh, human uh, involved uh, in the compound synthesis. And so we are uh, continue to uh, develop um, uh, or perfection the, the, the system uh, and also uh, uh, further scale up uh, the system, uh, which is uh, uh, potentially have a, a great impact uh, to serve the community and provide a high quality, uh, very um, uh, uh, sort of on time type of uh, a supply uh, of the compound for the drug discovery process. So this is generally about our business, but also related to the technology uh, application. Uh, and so uh, I, I talk a little bit on the uh, development, uh, a solid development side. Uh, but here, uh, it, it's a, if you look at the business pers perspective, it's really to to design the drug discovery. And here is the um, a classical drug discovery uh, challenges. And uh, on one way, um, it's related to, um, we, in a general term, it's a compound library. Uh, basically, it, it's a chemical space, uh, 
that you can reach. Um, theoretically, uh, actually, it's very much it's the size of uh, a galaxy, it's ten to uh, uh, to the to the sixth uh, cities. Uh, but if you com consider the the entire world, uh, the drug uh, sort of a, a rich um, the chemical space. Uh, probably uh, about the 10 uh, or 12, uh, that kind of space. And uh, the most recent, uh, uh, last decade, uh, there's some new uh, experimental based high throughput uh, screening uh, library, uh, like a, a dial uh, was uh, uh, invented and developed. Uh, and it absolutely is expanded as a chemical space uh, for. Um, from the uh, uh, diversity perspective of molecule of Skyfall. Uh, but it's, it's still, um, uh, if you uh, consider uh, 10 to the 60s, and the, the, we will only reach a portion uh, of the chemical space. And then how, again, so this is one question and how the AI can help that. Uh, so the generative model absolutely uh, have a contribution. I'll talk a little bit later. But the second one, uh, the drug and the, the molecule have this very unique um, uh, uh, requirement. And so there's a multi parameter optimization process. If you look at the drug uh, 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 discovery process, and it, so you, you have a you have a need for a very effective way uh, for the molecular evaluation system. And so that, that's again at that, that stage, um, the new technology, the machine learning, artificial intelligence, plus in our case, and uh, 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 physics based and um, uh, algorithm uh, uh, can help uh, uh, in that stage as well. And, but in the end, um, uh, you have uh, all of goes all through this process and you need to uh, have a, a system to support the data analysis and, and also help you to make a decision uh, making. Uh, so uh, again, uh, uh, from the, the high level uh, data integration and the decision making perspective, uh, how the, uh, the new algorithms can help that, that process. Uh, okay, so this is uh, uh, very much in the, the design and the analyze side. But the other side, so if you look, look at the DMTA cycle, uh, so you, after you design this and go through uh, later on, I'll mention a little bit uh, the, the process. And then you have a, a, a compound need to be synthesized. And so there's a, uh, uh, some challenges, questions related to that. And how can you uh, increase the ex experimental throughput and, and also some success of rate. It's involved with the synthetic pathway. It's involved in it's green chemistry. It's involved in um, uh, it's a yield, or et cetera. Uh, so th th that's a, um, a something is always a, a, the, the routine. And so synthetic camps uh, have to think of that. Uh, um, but the, the, the last one, again, if you look at the cycle, uh, is a test. Uh, so every project actually is unique, uh, but they have some common um, um, consider experimental uh, uh, validation part uh, in the process. And for example, uh, you, you need to bind your target. Uh, so this is part of, uh, uh, you can consider uh, it's about uh, a physical kind of uh, related test. Um, many uh, druggable, classical druggable target like an in enzyme, whatever. So the, the biochemical uh, assay is a very much uh, uh, applicable for not only one project, but one category uh, of the target. Um, but some others like a cell-based assay, et cetera. So those are, uh, uh, you can uh, divide into a different category, uh, which is to consider uh, how the machine learning artificial intelligence and, and also in our case, the uh, automation uh, can play a role. So this is general uh, uh, so in the drug discovery cycle, uh, potential um, area, uh, we may apply uh, the technology uh, uh, in, in that space. Um, so here is just, just a, a little bit more detail about the, this is in our case, um, how the AI enabled the drug discovery, uh, the process looks like. Um, that again, at the very beginning, uh, we talk about uh, from the uh, diversity of the uh, chemical space perspective, uh, the different uh, uh, scaffold perspective, and how you can, well, in this case, we apply um, the, the AI-based uh, uh, 
generative um, model uh, to generate uh, a more diverse and the bigger the chemical space for uh, the drug design and the drug discovery. And how apply it? So within the company have a more than 200 uh, different uh, AI models, but in gen general like this, it's like a GAN model or RCC model, et cetera. And so it's more like a, um, uh, you, you take a picture, uh, it's a real you, and, but um, the algorithm capture or the AI capture uh, your feature, uh, your eyes and nose and, and uh, et cetera. And then they generate another you. Uh, this is a totally uh, a, a new one, but related to, to you. Uh, it's associated with uh, your feature, but it, it's not really uh, a, a real take a picture of you. Uh, so you, this is just one example. So you, um, with a certain kind of a feature, you generate more. Uh, so this is uh, it, it tremendously um, expanded the chemical space and, uh, as a starting a point. And of course, and um, the, the, in general drug uh, a discovery, in this case, is more like a searching problem. And so in this very uh, vast, um, uh, the chemical space, how you can uh, quickly uh, identify uh, the molecule with your desired uh, feature. So this is a searching problem. Uh, but, but again, this process, um, um, in this case, is a, so more like a, a virtual screening. And so we uh, have set up a, a desirable certain kind of a feature and quickly uh, in this chemical space and uh, the ranking and the scoring a certain kind of a, a compound uh, which is uh, relevant to your uh, desirable, uh, uh, the molecule which is with your uh, desirable uh, features. And so this is sort of a, a, a virtual screening. But in this process, uh, you may, realize that the searching with certain criteria is it probably is not one criteria, but it's a multiple one. So how you incorporate all of those into the process. As although if you look at the traditional drug discovery process, you always, the very first one is about the binding, affinity or interaction. And then you try to make a, perfection of that binding, they constantly increase the uh, affinity. And to a certain stage, you move on uh, and say, uh, would like to have other uh, admin tops uh, kind of uh, uh, feature to consider uh, in, into the process. And that's for sure, it's, it's considered as a milestone. Uh, uh, it's more like a, uh, from the heat uh, to lead uh, and the lead optimization as well. And so it's, very much a traditional is a sequential process. Um, because of being cynical or computational, actually, uh, even at very beginning, we're talking about the binding uh, type of uh, uh, activity. And we already incorporate into uh, other uh, parameter in, uh, sort of uh, uh, in, in the process and uh, consider uh, when you have a hits and um, when you're ranking and in a scoring, uh, but actually it's one or two or even more uh, parameter actually related to the enemy talks. And so that, that's the advantage. And why are you doing this? Actually, you try to eliminate a lot of compound not even to be synthesized. And, and so uh, that's uh, uh, something uh, we constantly uh, doing that, but the, the general uh, flow uh, is more like that. And so you try to incorporate um, so the uh, multi-parameter optimization process as uh, early as possible. Um, uh, but in the end, it's a very accurate molecular modeling is after you go through this process and virtual screening. And so you're dealing with a, a, a sort of a doable number uh, of the compound, uh, which you can really do the uh, very accurate uh, molecular uh, quantum level calculation. Uh, but in this case, and, um, uh, the precision uh, uh, X uh, force field uh, play a very important role. And, and of FEP uh, too, uh, to really calculate the, the energy uh, 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 between the, the, uh, the molecule. And, and so um, after you go through this, and it's a, it's a real number or suggested for uh, compound synthesis, it's become a limited. And so that's the one way uh, to increase the efficiency. 
and, and to be synthesized. Okay, but since we're talking about the uh, robotic automation uh, can play a role uh, as well. But because of the process, actually, it also changed the way doing the test. And so imagine that the traditional way, the high throughput screening, the experimental base. Um, so you have to develop a so-called primary assay, and then you have a secondary assay, and then you have a functional assay. And so particularly the primary assay, you have to sort of a high throughput because you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of compounds. And, and, but in this case, uh, because you start to test the compound, it's limited. And so you, you, you actually be encouraged to do your functional assay as early as possible. Now, so this is another way, uh, which is a, a change uh, the paradigm of the classical uh, drug discovery process. And so we uh, have uh, uh, um, uh, really uh, try to implement this process um, into our uh, every single uh, drug discovery project. Uh, and uh, there are many uh, successful cases uh, related to the process. Um, so um, the other aspect, uh, I, I talked about the um, uh, start with the solid state and, and then drug discovery and, and, and the design, and now is a compound synthesis. This is a good example of, uh, uh, in, in the future probably become very common, is a, a digital twin uh, uh, idea. Uh, or a practice. And so on one side is computational. Uh, the other side is experiment. So it's a, a mirror. Uh, it's a very integrated part of uh, the process. And so like an airplane. Uh, so um, in many cases, without even a physical airplane was built, um, you have a computational simulation. Uh, about the specification uh, and the performance of the, uh, the airplane is already, uh, you have that kind of a, a simulation. And uh, again, it's like, a, so we start with, again, in the solid state. And so um, the crystal form, even before we not experimentally identify, we already know it's uh, what the lattice looks like. And there's a form of rules like. Uh, and so, so this is related to compound synthesis. And, and again, as computational, give you a way to uh, suggest a different synthetic pathway, for example, and reaction condition. Um, and, and, but then how you start to have an evaluation of the different synthetic pathway, uh, again, this is, we cannot say it's become completely uh, automatic, uh, the very experience, the synthetic chemists, the skill play a very crucial in, uh, a role uh, in this process. And then that's coding actually. And, and then uh, you divided the reaction into uh, the, the, the pathway into a different type of reaction. And, and then and the, the computational uh, uh, controlled uh, automation system uh, uh, start to synthesize the compound. And this currently, uh, we have a, a Shenzhen site. Uh, in general, it's a prototype of the uh, uh, the station uh, uh, started in Shenzhen, uh, and then uh, start of start to uh, scale up um, uh, the, the capability. Uh, it's in Shanghai. Uh, it's now uh, it's an operation officially uh, for public uh, last month, and so we are uh, continue to um, uh, develop the, the capability. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, in a not very long future, uh, we will have a, a very meaningful impact in the industry, in particular uh, in the uh, drug discovery uh, stage. Um, so very much uh, that's I'm trying to um, um, uh, sort of uh, uh, share our experience. And, um, and so what I can say is that the, the most awarding um, actually it's come from the industry recognition. And so if you look at our uh, global partner, um, uh, 15 uh, of the top 20 global farmers is already our, uh, our partner. Uh, and it, it, it's a, we, we cannot say anymore about the, 
um, uh, how proud uh, we, we feel uh, because you really see the, the impact. And the most recent example is like uh, um, uh, the COVID pill, uh, uh, the protease inhibitor uh, from the, the Pfizer actually um, we, we have a, a great contribution for that, uh, for the product the development. Uh, 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 simply be sure um, uh, the form they choose uh, is it, good for the manufacturer for the uh, product the development. And, um, and so uh, that's one type of uh, a partner. Uh, we not only consider it's a, simply a client, actually it's a, uh, our, our R&D in general uh, as a partner, it's a long-term, it's not only in the solid state, but also um, a drug uh, discovery and, and the design. And the other uh, representative is a, a um, China-based farmer and innovative uh, uh, tech company. It's a, definitely uh, uh, closely uh, working with us too. And so again, it's a benefit from uh, uh, the, with the company and also with the, uh, the technology is leverage the integrating technology platform. Again, as I mentioned, it's not only one piece, it's not only computational, but experiment as well. And that's one. The other is to apply the, the AI um, to enable sustainable uh, operation. Um, it, it's a very critical, in particular, uh, you are uh, involved in drug design, the discovery process. And you will see it's not only uh, again, it's an alliteration process. And you want to get this compound, not only from the design perspective, but from the synthesis per perspective uh, in, in, in timely manner. Uh, so this is crucial. Uh, and also uh, uh, how you incorporate the, uh, the, the compound uh, synthesis into the later stage of uh, testing and feedback to the design. So this process uh, actually um, uh, the machine learning artificial intelligence has introduced a little bit, um, uh, really can uh, enable uh, this operation uh, uh, in, a, in a, a, a better way. Um, the other one is uh, 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 the compound synthesis and uh, have multiple uh, synthetic pathway uh, uh, for sure. Uh, and how uh, apply the technology, uh, identify or recommend uh, a better pathway, uh, which is considered green chem part of the green chemistry. So this is, uh, um, again, it, it's a represent uh, the future and also um, uh, have a tremendous social impact. Uh, all of those are um, a part of the uh, support uh, from our very key uh, investors. And so uh, uh, there's uh, three categories and uh, one I would consider is a, a classical uh, TMT, it's a technology-driven uh, um, uh, uh, the investors, and the, uh, uh, namely uh, the Tencent and, and Google, uh, Google Alphabet. Uh, 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 but the other ca category uh, is uh, the, um, uh, the life science-related investor. Uh, uh, we talk about uh, the Albimat uh, and um, Sino Farm, uh, uh, et cetera. Um, and the health in general related, uh, like the China Life and PICC uh, is a, 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 a valuable uh, investor with a, a lot of uh, healthcare related uh, resources. And the, the other one is a visionary um, uh, blue chip uh, investor like SoftBank uh, and uh, Sequoia and the 5Y uh, capital is uh, uh, the morning side uh, uh, capital of uh, China. Uh, uh, now change the name of uh, Five Y um, uh, uh, Capital. Yeah. So um, uh, this, this is a uh, 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 tremendous help. And, but uh, again, I would try to say is that, that the most of the rewarding part of the company uh, actually has come from recognition uh, uh, from the industry. Uh, so we, we do see the, the directly impact uh, in the product development and the drug design and the discovery. Uh, I'll stop over here and um, very happy to uh, uh, answer uh, questions uh, uh, from uh, uh, the audience. Thanks. Thanks, Ellen, for your wonderful talk. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, uh, please use the chat box to 
um, to, to ask directly or uh, raise hands. I can allow you to speak. So uh, feel free to join the discussion anytime. Great. Yep. Um, uh, we have a question about the uh, the data. So, um, um, so what if the um, for for some for some of the disease model that we we don't have enough data to predict that the small molecules or the big mo molecules? Um, yeah. As we all know, that the AI is probably depends on the. I mean, the, the, the data is the food of AI, right? Otherwise, this cannot yes. be functional. So um, yeah. what if it's like a rare disease without a lot of the data uh, available? So uh, is there any way that um, uh, Crystal Pie can, can, can do something about it? Thank you. Yeah, um, that's a very good question. Uh, um, so um, there's some many type of data. Uh, as, uh, for Crystal Pie, very, very much focused on the chemistry space. Yeah, so we're not talking about like a, a biology. And so we are not talk directly talking about how you identify with the AI technology, uh, identify a drug target. And so we usually working with our partner, uh, which is to have a tremendous uh, expertise in the biology part. Um, and so we focused on how can we quickly identify molecular modality, uh, which is the uh, intervening uh, the target uh, have some uh, pharmacological effects uh, uh, that that space. Okay, but even in the chemistry space, you definitely involve the data set, right? And so, if you look, look at simply look at our computational technology platform, I not mentioned the experimental part, the computational part, it have a three major component. One is one class of algorithm is really fundamental first principle based. Uh, we're talking about uh, quantum physics. So those are very fundamental uh, uh, algorithms. And the other is machine learning artificial intelligence. It's every talk, everybody talking about those kind of uh, algorithms. And, and of course, the third element uh, is uh, supercomputing, uh, which is uh, cloud-based. That, that's the infrastructure, computing infrastructure. So how does that relate to data? And so on one side, when you're talking about the machine learning artificial intelligence, it actually is a top down. And so you need a data support and from the top going down. And the quantum physics actually is button up. It's the first principle. So when you're talking about, particularly at the very beginning, we're talking about the, the data. Actually, we generate the data our own. It's a quantum mechanical data. And so it's a, all you can consider is a virtual data. It's a high quality quantity and supercomputing and so generate those kind of data. So those are one category uh, of the, the data we come from, we, we generate our own. But when you're talking about the data related to admin talks, so this involves in more complex interaction. Um, it's not only the molecule and molecule and atom atom interaction, but it is more systematic uh, organ and, and uh, a tissue cell uh, level kind of interaction. Well, that's a the different source, and, and one part is general again. The most I can say is the most reliable probably is to generate our own, uh, but also there's a public database. And also many uh, data actually to, you can subscribe from a, a particular database and a type of uh, a provider. So those are you covered. Uh, if you look at our own, that, that's why uh, there's a sort of a requirement, uh, uh, not requirement, but there's a, um, a justification. So we do more experiment and we do more uh, projects and so you, you generate more, and so this is one. But also uh, we have, from the building model perspective and the parameter optimization perspective, um, doesn't matter the project is totally our own or during the course of collaboration, uh, always working with our client. And so you, it's, it's, the data is constant. And so that's how we, we generate data. But, very fundamentally, one part of the data actually generated uh, from the first 
first principle based quantum mechanical type of data. It considers a virtual data. It's a high quality, high quantity. So that's another reason why uh, or how we create our um, precision uh, force field uh, that based on that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for your answer. It's um, really thorough. Uh, we have another question in the chat box is asking about the positioning for um, X topic uh, 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 for for um, the position for the company. Asking if you you are uh, like a CRO oriented CRO company or how mm -hmm. do you define yourself? It's a very good question. Um, so <clears throat> um, it's a, like a Google, like a like a. Um, um, a Yahoo. And so at the very beginning, uh, you consider it's a search engine, that's right, uh, the Google. Uh, but how you define the Google, the current. Um, and so that means it's a, the, when the company in the different stage, uh, the definition can be a little bit different. It's, it's, a, it's a evolving. I always see this as a moving a business model. Um, uh, what I can say is in general, if um, a real, technology platform company in a particular technology driven uh, platform company. Um, the general business model is a provide service. And like a, uh, a TMT is very uh, a good e example or, or the industry sector. So you have a software and whatever. Uh, so those, those are really provide the service. And so, so from that perspective, or the gene of the company, actually it's a technology uh, based uh, platform company. And so all of this um, provide a service as a business model is a, a, a very logic option. And in particular, that if you look at our very early, we're talking about crystal structure prediction, pure computational and the recognition into one way to recognize actually people willing to pay for it to get this virtual computational results. So this is initially we, we're doing that. But people either say, why if you can do the drug dis design, drug discovery, why you don't yourself do the, uh, the pipeline things? It's a become uh, uh, sort of an asset uh, based about that company. Again, if it's a, a, a really platform type company, the whole entire technology not probably only benefit one or two asset and move on. Probably more meaningful way is, is the entire community or the, the industry. So this is another way to think of that. But then there's another logic. So why you don't this? We all know that the, the, the molecule itself become a drug. So this is a, a big impact. Um, um, so from the midterm and long-term perspective, you, we, we, we find a way, how can we have this at the asset level, the technology can, uh, in, can help uh, or benefit the company and the community as a whole. That is a collaboration. So working with the best, uh, for example, biologists in certain area. Again, we are focused on chemistry space. And the very early the biology, which is also related to uh, clinical development and the commercialization of the patient population. So that's closely connected. But we do at the moment our best part, which is the chemistry part. And for the business model, logically, it's a provided service. So if you label it as a CRO or next generation of CRO, the technology-driven CRO, that's a perfect fine. But it's a definitely, it's a technology driven, including like a, a robotic automation, for example. From the user perspective, it's a compound. Um, doesn't matter if it's a human really synthesizes compound or machine. But from technology perspective, that's, that's a different. Uh, that's a represent probably industry as uh, 3.0, uh, the next generation of the industry. Uh, uh, model. So th that depends on how you look at it. But from the business side, I, I, I agree, uh, it's a provided service. Yeah, it's really well said that the, it doesn't matter if it's from a machine or it's from a person, about yeah. probably in the future, 
as the the, the, the difference is going to be bigger and bigger between the machine and humans but yeah yeah totally agree okay we have a um another question the chat box is asking for the front racing i was asking uh do you have any insights um to share uh for the the, the company growth and also is there any um big challenge in your in your perspective during your venture journeys any mm -hmm. um, suggestions or tips for the early mm -hmm. stage biotech um startups um for young scientists as well thanks uh i'm so glad um uh, for this question, uh, it, because uh, um, during the course of the company, uh, and also at the very beginning of the company, we sort of that um, the general the direction of the company at the very beginning, you have to set up or uh, uh, the pitch uh, to the investor um, uh, what we really trying to do. Um, it convinces people uh, it's doable uh, that type of things. And so going back, I'll recap, uh, as I, at the very first slide, I introduced the, the history of the, uh, the company. It's a very important part, um, any technology uh, application, in particular in life science or biopharmaceutical industry, um, is to convince people something people can, can validate. And so if we start with drug design and the drug discovery, I doubt it uh, we can go this far. Uh, it, it's a, the thing is we, we start with the solid state, uh, which you consider very challenging. Uh, the most, if not possible, uh, the, the most advanced um, uh, computational based uh, uh, company uh, try to solve this problem for many years, and there's no good solution for that. And in particular at the industry scale, the molecule which is organic uh, molecule now, because of the, uh, the design and it become more and more complicated. And so uh, the, there's no good solution for that. Um, but simply because of that, there's no uh, really considered industry scale type of uh, a technology ready for that. And, but we, we, we consider it's more like a rare disease strategy uh, from a therapeutic perspective. Uh, there's tremendous unmet needs. It's not medical need, but it's the, from the technology needs. And so, but the good thing about that is you can validate your technology experimentally. So if you, again, if you're doing the drug design type of things, probably very hard to convince people um, uh, your technology uh, better than the other or the current. It, it's very hard, um, uh, the, the process, uh, but that one different. But then you ex how you expanded your technology to drug design, the drug discovery. Again, the very first thing we try to convince our investor is it working very well in crystal structure prediction. And if you look at technology challenge, the crystal structure prediction much harder because molecule molecule interaction, the interaction is weak, that's the Van der Waals force. So they require high accuracy, a teeny tiny different, gave you a totally different form. But if you look at the drug design, drug discovery, the molecule and your protein interaction predominant actually is hydrogen bound, much, much stronger. So if you can do this, you can do that. And so this fundamental technology is a transferable. And so I can convince, although I cannot, the current, I cannot convince you our technology superior from the design and discovery process perspective. Uh, but I can convince you the two works well because it works from, that's a physics based, it's a transferable. And so I can convince we can do the drug design, drug discovery because one, two, three, four, two work very well. That's validated at the industry level. It's the highest level you can get. Okay, but the rest is gradually say, well, not only two validated, but the process, the flow, I try to, to demonstrate also works. Okay, so that's a, a real project that we, we have a one, two, three, four, and more and more gradually 
build the reputation. So that, that's something, if I say um, um, for the fundraising, again, it's a, people have a logic. And also we, we try to explain it very early about the significance of a crystal structure position. This took a long, long, long time. People not really have that kind of a sort of a background of knowledge. When you're talking about drug design, drug discovery, oh, everybody excited. And so that's a different thing, uh, but not necessarily uh, the very exciting uh, area. Uh, you're going to automatically attract more uh, interest from the uh, financial world because in the end, it's a biopharm particular. I, I only focused on the biopharmaceutical industry. It's experimental based. It's evidence based. Doesn't matter the computational or uh, other uh, algorithms based prediction, whatever. It, but in the end, the, the wet lab based experimental validation is the, the gold standard. And so you have to convince people uh, that really that there's an association, uh, uh, that, that type of things. Um, but the other, um, um, lesson uh, uh, learned, uh, again, it's a visionary things. And the people uh, usually uh, have a sort of a tendency. Um, it, it's a, there are so many steps in the whole process. And your algorithm or computation or whatever, or, or technology, um, probably best in this particular area. But you have to have a, a bigger vision to see because if you look, um, there are so many components in the process. So even you have an incremental uh, increase, a certain kind of efficiency or uh, a better uh, a way, uh, better results, probably in the whole entire process is becoming insignificant. And so again, that's like a principle component analysis. So this is probably not even that important. And, and so that's a very hard to convince people uh, you are going to have an impact in a particular area. It's very hard, uh, but this is a, a tendency, uh, is a particular from academic lab. And so I, I do this as best, and, and I believe it's going to have a big impact in the whole process, but actually it's not. Uh, because in the particular in the drug uh, space, it's a multi-parameter optimization. You have a way, uh, have a better uh, parameter uh, optimization does not mean that the whole molecule has become um, uh, optimized. And so um, it's a, have a, a bigger view and an integrated view, but at the very beginning, it's hard. So the, doing whatever, uh, the, the very choice of the area uh, you're working on, are probably is very important. Um, and that's from technology perspective, uh, what, what I can say. And we, we're very fortunate, we start with a crystal structure prediction. And it itself, it's a, the, the, the problem or the question is it big enough. And this is simple area, if you provide the solution, it's already see the, the impact, uh, the answer reward. Uh, so that's how we survive. Uh, the first small startup is the very first things in your mind is to survive. Yeah, thank you. Uh, due to the time, uh, we still have one last question. So um, it's asking, um, for um, the competition compared with some other companies. They're saying uh, there are a lot of the strong competitors in the wet lab and computational and solution um, chemical space like Wuxi. Um, what is your um, competitive edges compared with Wuxi Pharmaceuticals? Um, I, I, I don't think the two pharmaceuticals companies are identical, but uh, please yeah. advise, thanks. Yeah, we, we, we never consider is uh, uh, th that kind of a relationship. No, uh, it's a, uh, like a Wuxi represent, it's very respected, represent um, uh, the one type of uh, uh, business uh, which is labeled as a CRO and how kind of uh, impacted the industry. Um, so different historic background for that. Uh, I, I think it's a, a globalization is one side, but the other, is uh, the, um, uh, the the talent, uh, the scale uh, uh, matters a lot. Um, but in essence, uh, Extopi, from the business model perspective, uh, again, provide the service per perspective, 
it's an overlap. It, it's a, have this uh, impact uh, to the very similar uh, biopharmaceutical uh, industry, but, but actually exopile is beyond that. Uh, so we have a, in general, we consider it's more like a material science uh, um, a company. Uh, we, we, we have a, a client and customer uh, in uh, EV batteries, uh, agriculture, etc. cetera. It's uh, not limited uh, to a uh, biopharmaceutical industry, but it's uh, probably is one of the major focus uh, uh, area, industry uh, sector. Um, but the technology behind that or the deliver is completely different. Uh, so we are, uh, the gene of the company uh, actually is a computational, uh, is a physics and machine learning artificial intelligence, all this uh, algorithm in, in their blood. Uh, so the way uh, reach a very similar goal, the approach is different. Uh, well, what I can say, well, uh, um, like a synthetic pathway, that you have one way, uh, but you have an alternative green way, you have a more efficient way. So those are, uh, I think it's a different. Uh, we, we learn uh, it from uh, the, the, uh, um, uh, the uh, like a traditional, uh, the, the CRO uh, in, in the, their business and, uh, and also try to increase uh, the entire uh, industry uh, efficiency uh, as our mission uh, stated uh, we have several aspects uh, in our mission and so I, I think we, we, we learn we will respect um, but uh, but in general behind uh, the delivery um, um, it, it's a different uh, it's, a, it's a chemistry a traditional uh, delivery versus uh, very much a technology driven delivery uh, that, that's a problem it's a difference. All right, um, due to the time, um, we call it um, a day for now. So thanks a lot, Alan, for the wonderful talk and for uh, the wonderful discussion. We certainly learned a lot today. Um, if, you have, if you have any more questions, please use the chat box um, or use our um, uh, send an email to our uh, email address, which is also in the chat box right now. Um, there will be more event from QB later. Uh, welcome to follow our um, social media. So uh, welcome to participate in our uh, future event as well. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot, Alan. Um, it's, it's, it's really a pleasure to have you here tonight. And uh, um, um, so, so, so in the future, uh, looking forward to more collaborations and all the best with uh, Xtel Pi um, with, uh, with the development. Um, so uh, uh, th thanks a lot for your time, everyone. Have a good night and uh, see you next time. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thanks to Q Bay and, and Michael uh, for organizing this and uh, really uh, uh, honored to, uh, to share our experience and, and, and some uh, uh, challenges uh, during the course of the company. Yeah, great, thank you so much. Thank you everyone, have a good evening. Um, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.